Okay, welcome to episode two of I'm Writing a Book. It is Tuesday and I am about to start my very first couple of lines in the book. I don't have an hour to write. I think it'll only end up being 20 or so minutes, but hopefully I'll be able to write a little more later today. But I think at this point all that matters is that I just get started. So I'm super excited. Um, I did some math and to stay on track I need to write between 800 and 1000 page, not pages, oh my gosh, words every day. So that is my goal for today, some word count in between 800 and 1000. So let's get to it, let's get started. Saturday, so quite a few days later, and I will be the first to admit that I have encountered some unexpected roadblocks in this first week. So as of right now, I've only written about 2,000 words, which if I were on track, I should have written about 6,000 by now. So I'm already pretty monumentally behind, and I'm definitely feeling a little disappointed in myself. Um, but I've definitely encountered some issues. The first thing I noticed when I started writing, like when I wrote those first words, was that the story just didn't feel real to me. Um, I didn't feel very emotionally invested. I feel like, or I felt like I was out of my depth when it came to the details and the characters and all these things. I mean, what I'm writing about, I can't say that for the most part I have any personal experience with. And because of that, I just feel fraudulent while I'm writing. And to be honest, it really took a toll on my enthusiasm about this project. Um, like I mentioned, this story idea kind of came up in a dream one day. And I really was so enthused about the idea. I felt like it had really amazing potential. And yet now here I am finally having the chance to write about it and just it feels like nothing's flowing and it's just not the way I thought it would be. And another issue I've been having is that I'm having a hard time sticking to the routine. So if you watched episode one, a lot of advice online says that if you really wanna sit down and try and do this and write a book, you should try to set a routine. So a certain time of day, you write every day for a certain amount of time. And personally, I set that time at 10 a.m. every day, and I wanted to write for an hour at that time every single day. And because of the nature of my job, I don't really have regular hours, and it's, you know, a couple times this week I've been doing something else during those hours that I couldn't really have done another time. and. I think in general this pressure to stick to a very tight schedule, if anything, has hindered me even though it was originally written as advice. I was feeling really disheartened about all of this and honestly I will be, you know, completely transparent if I hadn't already shared this first video online and shared that I was doing it, I probably would give up just about now because this story doesn't really feel like it's clicking for me. And yeah, I was just feeling really disheartened. But today something pretty kismet happened and I feel like it's the universe <laughs> giving me a sign to keep going and just see 
what happens. Like I said, it's not like I'm trying to publish this book or have anything amazing come from it. It's more of a personal goal to just complete a manuscript and it will probably just sit on my computer for the rest of my life. I have no intention of sending it off. But as I mentioned in my first video, I've been reading Stephen King's memoir on writing. And this talks about kind of his journey as a writer and how he got to where he did. And he talks in the part that I'm in right now about he just took this chance on a book that came into his mind one day. And that book ended up becoming Carrie, which is the book that, you know, most people would say launched his career. And he wrote a kind of an excerpt in On Writing about how when he first started writing Carrie because all of the protagonists in that, well, protagonist and antagonist in that novel, most of them are female and teenage, he felt really out of his depth because he had no personal experience about what it was like to be a female teenager. And he basically just wanted to give up on it. And it was in the end his wife who encouraged him to you know, keep going for it and see what happened. And of course, like I said, Carrie ended up being his big breakout novel. So obviously I am not Stephen King, not saying that I am. And I'm also not trying to write a breakout novel. Um, but I do think that there's something to be said for pushing the limits of your comfort zone when it comes to your personal experiences as a writer. Most writers have written about things that they themselves haven't personally experienced and yet they have had success. So I have to imagine that there is a way to do it successfully and that the feelings of discouragement that I am facing are probably normal at this stage of the writing process. So I have a few things that I'm going to do now to kind of course correct this process and get back on track next week. So first off this evening, I'm going to try to catch up the word count, which is ambitious. It will be three to four K words that I'm going to try to write tonight. And after that, I'm going to change some of my mindset moving forward. The first thing that I'm going to do is to stop committing myself to a certain time every day to write. It's just a certain amount of time every day to write. So I will no longer be saying that I need to be writing at 10 a.m. every day. I will just say that I need to write 45 minutes every day. And that's just one thing that I know is gonna help take that pressure off me and help this process feel a little more organic. And lastly, I'm just going to keep reading on writing and hope that Mr. King's encouragement will keep me, you know, pushing through the early doubts of the writing process. Okay, so I've hit about 4,000 words and I think I will probably call it at that. I'll definitely have some catching up to do next week, but I wanted to show you guys a few things that have been helping me so far in the process. So the first thing I did was, um, this is kind of silly, but I changed the font. I'm not a big fan of Arial, so I changed it to Times New Roman. And I feel like that just puts me in a better writing mood, I don't know. And another thing is I added page numbers also almost right away so that I can keep track of how many pages I am at. So regardless of your laptop situation, I think backing up your document is probably always a good idea. Um, I'm just using Word so that it's just a file. It's not getting backed up to the cloud or anything. And I also have a very old laptop 
that is honestly liable to die any time, so I'm just making sure that I'm backing up the document as much as possible, but I just use this simple, basic external hard drive for all of my work stuff, so YouTube, Instagram, Patreon, and I've also just been putting the um, project document on here, and I will link this in the description if you're interested in something similar. Like I mentioned, I am currently reading On Writing by Stephen King, and I'm really enjoying it. I really appreciate how he's, you know, telling these life stories and all that, but then every now and then he'll just sprinkle in a little bit of writing wisdom. So I wanted to share a few of the like quotes that I highlighted while I've been reading. I'm about 100 pages in and I think I'll probably be finished by the next episode, so I'll give you my full thoughts and reviews then. So the first excerpt I highlighted was the one I was talking about earlier, about Carrie and how Stephen King almost gave up on that novel. So he said, but none of those other novels taught me the things I learned from Carrie White. The most important is that the writer's original perception of a character or characters may be as erroneous as the reader's. Running a close second was the realization that stopping a piece of work just because it's hard, either emotionally or imaginatively, is a bad idea. And that was the quote that just really stuck out to me and made me decide to keep going. Another thing that I found really encouraging that he wrote was, if you write or paint or dance or sculpt or sing, I suppose, someone will try to make you feel lousy about it. That's all. I'm not editorializing, just giving you the facts as I see them. Which, as someone who's been creative her whole life, um, really spoke to me and I really appreciated King kind of throwing that in there. Let's get one thing clear right now, shall we? There's no idea dump, no story central, no island of the very bestsellers. Good story ideas seem to come quite literally from nowhere, sailing at you right out of the empty sky. Two previously unrelated ideas come together and make something new. Your job isn't to find these ideas, but to recognize them when they show up. Which just kind of reminded me of how I got the idea for this book, it just literally kind of showed up out of nowhere, and I also found that pretty encouraging. <laughs> I really loved this quote that Stephen King wrote about his feelings when he first started writing. So King started writing when he was really young, he was like eight, eight or nine, I think, when he first started writing. I mean, obviously they weren't very good at first from my understanding, but he talks about this like feeling when he first understood this concept of writing and I thought it was really beautifully put. He said, I remember an immense feeling of possibility of the idea, as if I had been ushered into a vast building filled with closed doors and had been given leave to open any I liked. The, there were more doors than one person could ever open in a lifetime, I thought and still think. So I thought that was really beautiful, but I'm not going to read any more because I don't want to like give away the whole book. Obviously all those quotes were from Stephen King, his memoir on writing, so do credit to that. And I will also link this book in the description, even if you're not looking to write a book. I think it's just a really fascinating read. It's really cool to see where this like honest like mountain of, <laughs> of a man in the literature world kind of came from in his roots and it's been a really fun read so far. But anyways, there is episode two. I suppose if there's any lesson I've taken away from this week, it's that feelings of inadequacy are never a reason to stop. I think if anything, they're normal and maybe even a good sign. So I'm going to push through those feelings. And even though honestly, when I'm writing right now, I just feel like I have the vocabulary of like a sixth grader. I just really am not loving my writing. But right now what's most important to me is holding true to this deal I made with myself. And then later I can come back and edit and fix the language and feel like I'm putting out something that's a bit more artistic. But right now I just need to get the story out on the page. So I definitely have some catching up to do next week. So next week will be a writing marathon of sorts for episode three. Thank you so much for watching and for following along in this journey with me. And I hope you found it enjoyable and that it encourages you to keep pushing even if you feel inadequate or uncomfortable sometimes because in the end being out of your comfort zone usually brings really amazing things. So.